Hey guys, in this video I try to explain how to update the STM32 version of the 4-in-1 multi-module from Banggood. This video will be a supplement to the online documentation. Please refer to the official guides and check the video descriptions for corrections and updated information since lots of things can change after this video is published. If you have the older Atmega 328P version of the 4-in-1, please refer to my other video for a general guide, but as always read the latest online documentation. Again, I must warn you that you shouldn't flash it unless you really have to. Lots of things can go wrong. The process is pretty technical and I try to simplify things the best I can, but I can only do so much. There are a lot of resources online via the official GitHub page or RC Group's forums and of course Google. Links to the information and parts will be available in the description. With that said, if you still want to update the STM32 4-in-1 module, watch the rest of this video. In this video, I'll show you what parts are needed, how to solder the headers, download and set up the Arduino IDE environment as well as connect it to the programmer, uploading and compiling the sketch, and finally we'll test the multi-module to make sure that it still works. To flash the STM32 4-in-1, you need a FTDI serial USB programmer. This is the one that I happen to have already from previous projects. I've used this to program an Arduino board for my AR drone and I'm glad I can reuse it for something else. I'll try to link to the one I'm using in the video but it probably won't be exactly like the one I'm using since I got it many years ago. There are a lot of different ones available. Some might have a full USB connector with male connections. So use the right wiring harness to fit your purpose. You'll also need some breadboard wire to connect the 4-in-1 to the programmer, basically connecting TX to RX, RX to TX, and ground to ground. You'll also need some 2.54 millimeter header pins to connect it to the programmer, and a jumper to connect boot zero to put the 4-in-1 into programming mode. The first thing we're gonna do is solder some headers onto the 4-in-1 module. Take the 4-in-1 out of the case and then break off a few of these header pins. Three of these pins will be used for the ground, TX, and RX connections. And the next three will be used for the boot zero connection to short the pins one and two. Hold the header pins in place while I solder it. I'm gonna add a little bit of tape. Soldering isn't that hard once you do it enough. The key is to heat the area you want the solder to flow to. You're not really trying to melt the solder directly with the iron. Once the contact areas are heated up and you touch the solder wire to it, it should just melt and flow on the copper. Try not to add too much solder, just enough to hold it in place. Like anything, less is more. I used to be really bad at soldering in high school and my electronics teacher at the time gave me this LED project where I had to do like 100 connections and by the time I was done, I was actually a lot better at soldering. So practicing will make it a lot easier. After soldering the header pins, remove the tape and check that the header pins are firmly in place and they are indeed. And I'm going to show you how to hook these things up. Pin 1 is actually at the bottom so connecting pins 1 to 2 will short it and enable boot 0 to allow you to program the 4 and 1. And when you're done programming the multi-module you want to put it in pins 2 to 3 which means no connection. Or what you can do is remove the jumper completely when you're done updating the firmware. So typically I'll leave the jumper in this position when I'm done flashing the 4 and 1. And the three other header pin connections at the top of the 4 and 1 module is where you will plug up your USB programmer. There are three connections so it's actually pretty simple. There's ground, TX, and RX. Pause the diagram here to see where you need to plug the jumper wires but it's pretty straightforward. There's, Like I said there's only three connections and this is how you connect them. Put the 401 back in its case and we'll move on to the next step. Here's the diagram again on how to connect the breadboard wires to your USB programmer and the 4-in-1 module. After connecting all the wires properly, you want to put the 4-in-1 module into your transmitter, like so. And what you want to do is make sure that the uh, connections are correct using the diagram I showed you before. And you want to have, you want to make sure that boot 0 is shorted, so pins 1 and 2 are connected. And from here, my USB programmer actually needs a mini USB cable that plugs into my computer. So plug it into the USB port here. We're going to power the 4-in-1 with the transmitter because it outputs a proper 3.3 volt. So once you turn on the transmitter, you'll notice that the light comes on on the 4-in-1 module. When you plug your USB serial programmer to your computer, it should go online and download the necessary drivers. It should show up as a serial port. In my case, it shows up as COM3. 
In your case, they may show up as comp four, five, or six. It depends on what you have already on your system. I'm actually just gonna be following the GitHub page instructions here for compiling and programming the STM32. So I'll just run through your the steps here on what you need to do. We're gonna start here by compiling the source and flashing the 4 and one in the Arduino IDE. But the first thing you wanna do is download the Arduino IDE from the official website. So you wanna download the latest version here that is available for your operating system. I'm gonna download the Windows one, but pick the one that is for your operating system. Next, you wanna make sure you have the latest version of Java, and you can do that by going to java.com downloading the Java runtime environment. Next you want to download the STM32 core and what we're going to do with this is copy it into the hardware folder of your Arduino. I'm going to show you the process in the following video and then after that you want to download the official source code for the multi-module by going to the github page here and uh, clicking on clone or download and then downloading the zip file. So you should have four things downloaded, the Arduino IDE, the STM32 core, as well as the uh, multi-protocol module source code, as well as Java. Install or update the Java runtime environment, as well as install the Arduino IDE by double clicking on the executables. I'm going to do that right now, and as you can see, it's already installed, so I'm just going to click cancel. Now I'm going to unzip the multi-protocol source code by clicking, right clicking on it and then selecting extract all. I've already done this so I'm just going to hit cancel. You want to also extract the STM32 core. Again I've already done that. After unzipping the STM32 core, open up the Arduino STM32 master folder and inside you'll see another folder with the same name. Rename it to just Arduino STM32. Right click on this folder and choose copy. We're actually going to copy it into the Arduino hardware folder. So go to C drive, program files, Arduino, hardware, and this is where you can paste the folder. I've already done that, but what you want to do is right click and then choose paste. I'm just going to hit cancel or no because I already have it there. Go into the Arduino STM32 folder and STM32F1 core maple, lib maple, and then you want to find the file called usart underscore f1.c and edit that. What you want to do is find these few lines here. I've already done it, but what you want to do is you want to comment this out. So originally it looked like this, so it didn't have these uh, this star and slash. So what you want to do is actually comment it out by adding them. So you want to hit the uh, forward slash and then star start the comment and then you want to end the comment by hitting star and then slash again so you want to comment those lines out and then save the file now you want to go into the multi protocol source code and go into the multi protocol folder look for the multi protocol dot ino file and double click on that click on the tools menu select board and then board manager you want to install the Arduino DUE for the ARM Cortex M3 and to do that search for DUE there should be one available and what you want to do is highlight that and then click on the install button I've already done it so mine says remove but in your case it would say install after you do that hit the close button after installing the DUE you want to close the Arduino IDE and then relaunch it again by double clicking on the multiprotocol.ino file. After restarting the Arduino IDE, we want to select the correct board. So go into tools and select a generic STM32F103C series board. So it should be here now, right there. And I already have it selected. Next you want to select the right variant. I have the 120 kilobyte version and the speed is 72 megahertz and then you want to select serial and finally you want to make sure that you have the right com port selected um, my usb programmer is in com3 yours may be different but there should only be one unless you have more com port devices 
before we compile the firmware, I'll show you where you can edit some options in the underscore config.h file. This is where you can make customizations for the um, firmware in terms of features you want enabled or disabled. So we're gonna go quickly go through this list here just to give you an idea of what you can do. So here, this section here allows you to say disable certain modules. Let's say you don't want the A7105 module. You can just comment it out by putting double slashes. And if you want it enabled, you can remove the double slashes. Of course, you can enable or disable certain protocols that you may not use. And in this section here, you can define the telemetry and everything below here you can also modify. I'm just gonna leave it stock because I want everything compiled in. Since the STM32 can hold everything, you might as well just have everything enabled. So the config.h file is where all the magic happens and tweak it to your liking. Anyways, we're gonna start off by first um, expanding the status window here so you can see what's going on. Now it's time to compile the source code. So hit verify slash compile and it should start the process. Now that it's compiled, you can see the actual size of the program. It's actually quite big and you can see that it won't fit on the App Mega version, but it will definitely fit on the STM32 version of the 4-in-1. With 128 kilobytes of memory, the firmware only occupies 43% of the memory. Depending on the options you choose or the version of the firmware, your size will vary. Now it's time to upload the firmware. Click Sketch, Upload. When the lights on the programmer start flashing, it means that it's writing to the 4-in-1 module. When the lights stop, it means that it's done flashing and you can see that the 4-in-1 module now has a blinking light telling you that it's done. Now that it's done, you want to turn off the transmitter and we're gonna start unhooking the uh, breadboard wires from the 4-in-1 module, so just unplug that. You also want to uh, take off the boot zero jumper here. This is very important because if you don't take this off, your 4-in-1 module won't work. To make sure the flash was successful, we'll test it. Ensure you remove the jumper for boot zero. We're gonna test the 4-in-1 by binding it with my JJRC1000A. Plug up the battery for your quadcopter and it should be flashing very fast. It should be looking for a transmitter for it to bind with. So turn on your transmitter here and we'll wait for it to boot up. Now you want to go into the setup page for your model. So in my case, I'm going to go all the way down to page 2. This is where you can find the option to bind. So have it highlighted. And then what you want to do is just press the button to activate it. So press menu and it should stop blinking once the transmitter has bound with the quadcopter. And you can stop the bind, hit menu, and then you can test it by moving the throttle. The steps to update the STM32 multi-module is very similar to the AppMega328 version and I hope you found the video useful. It should give you a clearer picture to supplement the online documentation. All the components I've shown you in the video will be linked in the description so check them out if you're interested. That's it for the video. Please comment, like or subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.